We're going to create a carousel powered by dynamic data. To get started, I'm going to go to the component packages store and look for the slider carousel. Let's insert that. By default, if I switch to preview mode, I get this slider consisting of these three images as the content. And um, back in the uh, editor, I can see that these are the three children of the slider. I am mostly going to uh, leave the various knobs and such uh, at the default. You can play with them. The only thing I'm going to do is size this down a little bit so it's not super wide. And uh, we want to replace the contents of the slider, these three static images, with the actual uh, dynamic data from some backend. So for instance, let's say I had a set of products from my Shopify store that I wanted to display in this carousel. So to get started with that, first let's insert that data um, into the page. So I'm going to go back to the component store look for Shopify, insert that. And by default, it inserts this product collection. Um, it has various knobs that you can play with on the right to choose what data to show, etc. But by default, it shows everything in this grid. And so that's kind of the default layout. And it's also auto repeating things. So it's uh, handling all the repetition. Um, but uh, we actually don't want that. What we want to do is to wire this up, wire up this data to the carousel. And we want to take control of the repetition. Um, uh, we want to make uh, a single slide on that carousel repeat according to the product data. So what we're going to do is we're going to disable um, uh, layout and disable auto repetition. And I'm also going to just take the default children here and I'm going to delete that. So um, at this point, uh, product collection is just a pure data provider, fetching data from Shopify and providing it to whatever is inside of that, um, that box. So let's drag that slider up here to be inside of that product collection. So now the slider has access to the set of products. And uh, to show what I mean by that, I'm going to uh, select images two and three. I'll delete them. So we're left with only image one. And I'm going to set image one to repeat according to that set of products. So now it's actually uh, repeating uh, seven times or however many products I have. Um, you can't really tell the difference because all the images are the same, but I'm going to right click this image here and I'm going to say use a dynamic value for it. And uh, for that dynamic value, I'm going to pick the current items. Um, uh, under the current item, there's an images, a set of images, because each product can have more than one image. And I'm going to choose the first image and I'm going to say uh, use a URL for that image. So I'm going to pick that. And now we have the different uh, images in this carousel. Now, let's say I don't want just images. I want text as well, so maybe the product name. And uh, I also want this whole thing to be a link. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click this. I'm going to wrap it in a vertical stack, just some box, so that inside of that box, um, now the whole box is being repeated. Inside of that box, I'm going to insert uh, just some text. Um, it's very small right now, so I'm going to make it bigger so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to change that that text to also be a dynamic value that is the current item's name, let's say. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll duplicate that to um, a second one where instead of the name, I'm going to show the, let's say, the, the price, the value of the price, um, like so. And you can play with all the various settings here, um, whatever you, however you want to style things or lay things out. And uh, that's about it. So now if I preview this, you can see it's displaying our actual data. Um, and it, uh, to turn the whole thing into a link, um, we can just uh, make sure that box is selected, uh, choose that uh, to set its type to a link. And um, uh, for the destination of the link, we can uh, point it at some other page. Now, uh, usually what you want to do is have some dynamic pages or dynamic routes in your website. Uh, one for each product. And so we have a separate video on how to set up dynamic routes in a plasmic project.